Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a railroad spike into a steak flipper or a meat turner, whichever one you prefer. Let's get started. Alright, the first thing you need in this project is obviously your railroad spike. Um, with that aside, the second thing you will need is a pair of bolt jaw tongs. These are not railroad spike tongs, these are called bolt jaw tongs. And you need, you need them to be able to grip around this head because we will mostly be working out here on this end. So those are essentially the tools besides your fire, anvil, and hammer. Let's get started. Ladies and gents, hope you like that fast forward of all that uh, slow drawn out uh, drawing out process. Um, so as you can see, we got quite a bit of length out of this railroad spike here. Um, one thing you can do, you can choose to twist the handle if you want to make it more decorative. Uh, I do recommend knocking off the edges. Um, it doesn't have to go completely round for this, uh, but at least knock off the edges or any sharp or raw edges. Um, the next step here, well, here, let me actually give you the, the size of it. So, that railroad spike started at roughly right around six and a half inches or so, and it drew out to 14 and a half inches in total, uh, total length. So, that's quite a bit of drawing, especially if you're doing it by hand. Um, if you have a power hammer, that makes life a lot easier. Um, but, uh, anyhow, that's, uh, you can do it by hand. As I've done in other videos of drawing out stuff, I just go to the horn, the thickest portion of the anvil, and go from there. Um, but never mind all that. The next part of this process, we're going to bend this, this tip at a 90 degrees. And it's going to pretty much get bent down in the same direction as the head here is pointed. So that's going to be the first step and then after that's bent 90 degrees we're going to roll this little tip into a small little curly Q hook. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll do that next. We'll be at the anvil here to, so you can get a good shot of it and then uh, so you can see what's going on there and then we're going to do something special with this head. I can't wait till we do that. All right. 
this part, I switch to a much smaller hammer. I'm going to stick out about two inches or so over the edge of the anvil and bend it just straight down in the same direction as the head of the railroad spike. now is I'm going to take these butcher tools. Let's see if I can get a side profile here for you. Essentially just a leading edge. Anything that's got a taper with a leading edge is a, considered a butcher and chasing. Um, and I'm going to take and chase a center line down from both sides. I've done this on a previous video um, that should be released 
uh, already on my channel if you're watching in the future. Um, anyways, and then I'm using a curved butcher tool. Same thing, leading edge, but to the inside. Um, you guys can do this with regular chisels or whatever you like. Uh, I will try to do a video eventually on doing a um, doing a butcher tool video at a later date. So this way I can actually showcase how to actually make these tools uh, to you guys just in case you want to try this for yourself. It ends up making a pretty decorative looking, uh, looking little deal here. So the ideal is I'm not going just straight down the center of this leaf. I'm actually just a little off center and that's the way we want to be. So I'm just giving it some good pops here. The hammer I'm using is a flat face soft. It's a soft face hammer. that has a really nice flat face on it and it's about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds just to get some nice we're not trying to kill it, we're just trying to create a line or the impression of a line. So I like doing it cold first and I get a good groove done cold first and then I'll come back and I will actually heat this up and you know I will sink my cuts a lot deeper. But if you lay it out cold first this allows you to get everything set up exactly like you like so you're not in the heat of the moment. Excuse a pun. Sorry, drop the punch. Hopefully you're still in focus there. Eh, you're a little in focus. Let's get you a little more in focus, shall we? There we go. That's better. Um, it allows you to see where you're going. You're not worrying about the heat of the deal. You're just worrying about getting everything set up properly. Um, so I always take and mark out cold and then go to hot. Sometimes I'll do it all hot if I'm just trying to save some time but what I have found is a lot of times that doesn't actually save me any time it just ends up making me have to work a little harder for the same result so just keep that in mind when you're doing your own work maybe you'll find that to be true in your own right. So all we're doing is just chasing a line both sides. So I don't know if you can see that there um, I'm going to take you guys on a little bit of a ride. Ooh, motion sickness all the way. I'll tell you what, it's kind of hard to find the angles here um, that uh, I can work and you can look. Let's see here. So anyways, so there's our little chase line right down the center. So the next one I'll do, and this is going to be the little bit of the longer portion of the video, getting this stuff. Um, in play here so this way you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm just cleaning up that line. It's okay if this goes a little crooked we're not looking for factory straight here. Once again this is a leaf. It should be treated as such. It's organic. It's natural. Stop fussing with it. Oh. If you fuss with your leaves too much and force them, and you're always forcing them like I did when I first started blacksmithing, they look unnatural. We're trying to go for a representation. We're not trying to go for an exact copy or replica of a leaf. So keep that in mind. You know, give yourself a little wiggle room here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's starting to get a bit of a vein down the center. And... I'll just come in with my side chip, my side butcher, my curved butcher out here towards the tip and create a butchered end mark. Trying to avoid hitting that center vein as much as possible if you can. Sorry if I'm in your shot guys. Hopefully you can see that result there. Yeah, so try to stay off that center vein as much as you can and just use that center butcher that curved butcher to get in there nice and deep and give you a little bit of expression. So, a shout out to Alex Steele for anybody that hasn't seen that guy. Um, he does a uh, he does one. He calls it the I think the Ferrum Forge or 
some guy like that. Anyways, I'm going to screw it up. Probably shouldn't do shout-outs like that. Um, anyways, in no way affiliated with Alex Steele. I uh, think he's a cool guy, great YouTuber. Pretty pretty big channel. He's starting to get up there. Uh, definitely up there um, in the YouTubing world. Making ways, that's a good thing. But uh, anyways, he does a leaf in one of his videos. It's a stylized bottle opener um, that uh, is much as like... Um, much like this, so y'all may want to go check out his channel after you're done watching this one. Um, but uh, maybe he does a little bit better. But he uses butchers in that as well. Um, it's a pretty common chasing thing to do for blacksmithing. And all we're trying to do is once again give some impressions that we can follow when this thing's hot and blaring hot. Because Yeah, you guys can kind of see that. Hold on. Because when everything's blaring and hot, you can't hardly see these dang things. And when you, you know, where you want to be, and what you think might take you less time to just do hot, if you would have laid out cold first, you're in a much better shape. Come down here and give this a little bit of a kiss. There we go. Those won't need much at hot temperatures. Anyways, so you can start seeing a stylized leaf develop. Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I actually had to take and do this without filming it. It was a little tough to try to take and chisel in all these lines um, and actually get a really good shot with it uh, working here by myself. So what I have done here, I'll just go ahead and explain what I did. Um, this is all done cold, and this is done with butchers, butcher tools, like what you see here. Uh, I was taught how to make these with Tom Latne. Uh, he showed me how to make these tools for chasing into steel. Uh, these are quite thick. Um, they can be used cold or they can be used hot. They're just made out of some coil spring. Um, but essentially, I took the butcher tool with the leading edge facing that way and went down one side, then the other side, and then I took the curved butcher tool and made a bunch of chop marks down one side, down the other side. So, um, this is just one way that you can do it. I'm just trying to do a little bit of a stylized leaf on the end of my uh, uh, meat turner here. Uh, you can do what you like with the end here. You can leave it, like I said before, as a railroad spike. Um, or, you know, uh, beat it into some whatever myriad of shapes that you can think of. Um, this is essentially done. The whole thing is done. I've got the hook curled on the end. I've got the leaf done here on the end um, for the most part. What I am going to do is I'm going to heat this back up and I will go in here and I will actually chisel these in a lot deeper to give it a lot more pop. And then, uh, you know, I'll just wire brush it and then oil it. Um, so I'll put a, a finished photo of it here at the end of this video. Uh, thank you everyone who stuck around to watch the whole entire video. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, you know, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up if you like me. Thumbs down if you don't. Simple as that. Anyways, appreciate you guys watching. God bless you all. Have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one.